how did you initially kind of get those first, you know, listings on, on your platform? And then, you know, maybe over the course to like that, you know, a uh, million and kind of GMV, what were some ways that, you know, you initially kind of like attracted and onboarded that first supply? So when we got started, we, uh, we, we had the benefit of having some connections in some of our target sports. So I guess like one starting point is that we didn't try to launch a sports marketplace at well, we always positioned it as a marketplace for sports, but we knew we needed to start with a smaller focus. So similar to the way like Airbnb or Uber would focus on like a specific city, we focused on one sport to start. And for us, that was lacrosse um, because we had connections there. The site was always set up with all the other categories, at least like at a high level where you could shop hockey, baseball, but there really wasn't a ton of inventory there. And we didn't spend a lot of resources trying to gen like, aggregate uh, demand or supply. So we really launched with like 10 or 15 former, like recently graduated college athletes, small Americans who played at you know, Maryland, Duke. And we were able to populate the marketplace with their supply initially. And so it was really like 10 people, a hundred items when we got started. And then there were some forums and Facebook groups that existed at the time where these transactions were taking place in a much more like high friction environment. And so once this, the, mar the platform was built and we kind of were managing these sellers accounts, even though the inventory, some cases it was at my house, some cases it was at theirs. Um, but we really like hacked the, it in the beginning to get the flywheel going. Uh, and we would take the inventory and post it into the Facebook groups and forums. And then we'd be like chatting, like saying like, Hey, this is, listed for sale on sideline, you should go over there and shop for it. We would position ourselves like basically catfishing people like as the the, the athlete that they thought who was listing the stuff. Uh, and so the, at the high school player, usually in most cases, would come over, find out about sideline swap, they'd buy that product. But then the product was then set up to convert them to a seller. So they were thinking, well, if the top college athletes are using this, then I should use this too. And so with by kind of taking that approach and then going to more and more sellers at the college and, and pro level and bringing more people in, we were able to really build a bunch of momentum and get to tens of thousands of sellers, really mostly focused in lacrosse, or at least tens of thousands of listings, uh, and get the beginning of the momentum going. There were points along the way where, yeah, that obviously doesn't scale. And so we had to go find sellers who had larger quantities of gear. We found power sellers in Facebook groups and forums. We would like kind of work closely with them to bring them on. We did peer-to-peer -peer growth hacking too. Uh, and I'd say like as the marketplace evolved, that strategy evolved. So it went from this like really grassroots, like hand-to-hand -hand combat type stuff to building tech tools for eBay sellers to come over more easily and eventually for other you know, stores who had used inventory to come on. So the supply side evolved and now we have a pretty big B2C element to our marketplace. Uh, but in the early days, it was really kind of anything that we could do to get sellers onto the platform, uh, but always a focus on on quality of supply and focused on uh, specific sports at the time. So we went from lacrosse to hockey, then to baseball, then to golf and skiing and snowboarding and each subsequent sports gotten easier and easier, but we've tried to be thoughtful about which categories we go into. Um, and, and the quality piece was always like, if we start up market and have really high quality supply to begin with, uh, it was curation in a way, right? Where by focusing on which types of sellers we were bringing on the quality of inventory you saw when you came onto the marketplace was higher. And so then the buyers came on, had a better experience. And then they would list their inventory too. You know, that was more generic stuff, but priced really well. Uh, and and I, yeah, that, that seemed to work. So that was, that was our approach in the beginning.